in your book, The Harm in Hate Speech, you argue that hate speech should actually be regulated. Why? Well, it should be regulated for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, we should be concerned about the prospect of intercommunal violence, of hatred between different groups being stirred up, exaggerated, um, exploited by various speakers. We, we want to make sure that uh, we um, develop some sort of peace or harmony in society, particularly among religious groups at the moment. And secondly, we are worried, or we ought to be worried, by the prospect that hate speech aims to make members of vulnerable minorities feel excluded. It sort of undermines their basic social standing or it tries to convey a message to them that they are to be treated as less than human or less than citizens. But Professor, you already know what my next question is going to be. Wouldn't hate speech laws violate our most closely held belief in freedom of speech? It would certainly require us to rethink that closely held belief. And I think the United States has a very strong commitment to the First Amendment. And that's a very valuable thing in all sorts of areas, not just hate speech. We do restrict speech in various areas. You can't uh, engage in threatening speech. You can't engage in subversive uh, or in, uh, subversion or incitement or certain forms of um, libel or defamation. You can't uh, distribute child pornography. There are all sorts of speech acts that we do regulate. But you're absolutely right. This would require us to think very carefully about balancing the, 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 the very strong value that we have for free speech with the, um, the good that we were trying to do with these regulations. I will say that most other democracies who also believe in free speech have drawn this balance somewhat differently from the way that we have. But Professor, I feel like I'm on that slippery slope. How do you determine what's hate speech and what's not? Yeah, it's, it's a hugely important question. And the sense of a slippery slope is absolutely accurate. This is an area where great care is needed, as it's needed with every restriction on speech that we already have. So you need to have, first of all, a very well-drafted statute, making it clear that you're dealing with particular uh, abusive and threatening and insulting language that aims to stir up hatred between different racial groups or different ethnic or religious groups. So the first thing you do is pay attention to the uh, drafting of the uh, legislation. And then secondly, you have to have sensible people to administer it. And thirdly, you need to have judges who understand, who understand what we're trying to do and what we're not trying to do with these statutes. The, the final thing I'd say, Dominic, is that you really need to make sure that there are various exceptions and safe havens whereby people can say what they want to say, only not necessarily in a public context that is um, abusive or insulting. Perhaps the million dollar question tonight, Professor, do you feel that hate speech laws would have prevented the anti-Muslim video that's allegedly the cause of the violence throughout the Middle East from being made and distributed? It's really hard to answer that question. For one thing, there's, a, there's a, an enormous practical difficulty, as Secretary of State Hillary Clinton said yesterday, in actually preventing the dissemination of this material, even if we were legally entitled to do so. But secondly, it's, it's interesting. The hate speech laws that you have, for example, in Great Britain, make this a very, very close case, because although it prohibits stirring up hatred against um, a group of religious worshippers, say followers of Islam, it specifically exempts attacks on the religion itself or attacks on the founder of the religion. It draws that distinction between attacks on the believers and attacks on the beliefs. And from what I saw of that video, I watched most of it this morning, um, it is mostly an attack on the founder of the religion, an attack on the religion itself, although at near the beginning of the video, the thing is framed as an attack on Muslims themselves. You already know this final question, Professor. Professor Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes once said that free speech would not protect a man falsely shouting fire in a theater and causing a panic. Is the anti-Muslim video an example of shouting fire in a crowded theater? I think a reasonable case could be made. Those who made this video intended to cause a panic, in my view, or they did so with what we might call in the law depraved indifference as to whether a panic would result or not.